Hi everyone, welcome to this first of around about 40 weekly videos that I'm going to upload to help students prepare for their GCSE exams in summer 2019. Uh, these videos are primarily aimed at students studying for edXL, AQA and OCR 9 to 1 GCSE, uh, but they'll also be very useful for students that are studying for SEA and WJEC. And also the whole sort of purpose of these videos are for students to be able to um, ask questions, you know, post in the comments below, ask things, I'll be able to respond there, or even in next week's video I might sort of choose some of the things that people have asked and sort of focus on those in the video, okay? Um, so last uh, June, or May and June, um, I made some videos to help students prepare for their GCSEs in the, uh, that have just passed, and I was overwhelmed by the response, not only by the views and the likes, but also by just uh, students thanking me for making the videos to help them prepare for those exams. So what I thought was, rather than sort of just make the exams in May and June, start them in September, have them weekly going through the whole year, and that way students can sort of ask any questions throughout the year, and they've got someone to sort of just ask math, mathematical questions to about their GCSE maths, whether it's techniques to learn different things, you know, how to do a particular topic, um, just anything at all that you're finding tricky or want to find out more information about. Um, so yeah, so that's the whole sort of purpose of these videos. I'm going to sort of help you know students prepare for their exams coming up. First weekly topic is getting ready for summer 2019, and unfortunately, I don't mean the summer holidays. I mean getting ready for those GCSEs that'll be taking place in May and June of 2019. Now, there's going to be a wide range of people that may be watching these videos. Um, the vast majority of you may be year 11, fifth year students who are getting ready to go back to school. Uh, we may have students who are resitting their GCSEs, so in sick form, or we may have students that are older, um, you know, who are just studying maths at you know, evening classes or independently. But all of you are going to have to prepare for the year ahead, really. Okay. So I'm going to focus on four things in this video. Uh, first of all, equipment. Now obviously you're going to have the basic equipment, the, the pens, the pencils, rubbers, rulers, etc. Um, I'm just going to talk about three uh, quick bits of equipment today, three things. First of all, make sure that you have got a good compass. In terms of your compass, um, this is my lucky one, I believe it or not, a lucky compass. And make sure it's tight and you know how to tighten it. But um, a sort of a, a good compass is going to be very useful, particularly for topics such as constructions and loci, circles, things like that. So just get a good compass that you are used to. If you like the one you've got, great. This is the one I've had since I was in school, so it's really old. Um, but um, you know, get one that you like, or um, if you don't like the one you've got, get a new one. Next, protractor. Um, obviously, I've got this sort of semicircular protractor, but I also like these full circle protractors, particularly for bearings questions, just because they've got the zero at the top, and you can sort of line up and you can just sort of measure all the bearings up to 360 with them um, so it's just something that I quite like to have whenever you know if I'm studying or doing GCSE papers I quite often use these okay next um, calculators uh, for uh, GCSE maths whether you're studying for foundation or higher um, you will need a good calculator um, <laughs> believe it or not um, you know, having taught GCSE maths for sort of 12 years, some students will turn up to lessons throughout year 11 and not have calculators and ask me to borrow them and stuff. Um, I'm quite a nice guy, so I generally do lend them. Um, but um, one of the things that some students even try to do is to do questions on their iPhone calculators and so on. It's just, it's just not good enough, um, you know, to do the, do the calculations and the sums in the way that you would need to. Get yourself a scientific calculator. Um, sort of the Casio one is um, the Casio FX38 um, or, or 83. Uh, there's a solar panel one as well. Um, they're, they're, this calculator will do everything you need for GCSE and this calculator actually, you know, this type of calculator actually carried me through to A level. Um, if you're studying for GCSE higher, you might want to consider getting the FX, I actually write these down, um, the FX. 991ES plus. Uh, this calculator, um, I really like it for studying uh, students. If you're studying for GCSE higher, it's really useful um, in terms of it can help you solve equations. Like um, if you're using the quadratic formula, you can actually type in the uh, equation um, that you're trying to solve here and it will actually work out the answers. So you can check your answers. It's not actually probably used, or it's not, you know, that type of thing wouldn't be necessarily useful to, to do. You'd obviously need to show you're working out, but it's very useful to check your answers. Um, there's loads of other functions on this calculator. What I'll do is in the comments below, I'll actually, or in the disc video description, I'll put in a link to some of the videos of the sort of the extra features of this calculator, which are quite useful uh, beyond the, the Casio one. Um, 
either one of these will be fine for your GCSE maths. Um, I sort of, I was in the exam, I might even bring in both, but you know, either one of these is, it will be great. For foundation, this is the one that you want. For higher, you might want to consider that one, um, or that one. Okay, um, so uh, equipment, just obviously make sure you've got all the stuff you need for all your lessons or you know, even in classes or studying, etc. Um, but those are just three things which you know, I find quite useful. Okay, next, notes. Um, if you're in class, I would highly recommend making notes on what the teacher is explaining or teaching at the time. Some teachers might print these out and uh, print the notes out and give them to you, then you can annotate them. Um, if your teacher doesn't do that, like you know, generally me, um, what I would sort of ask my students to do would be to copy down key examples, key facts underline, etc. I sometimes would have a separate notebook to my exercise book. Now, obviously, you're going to need to check with your teacher what they prefer. Um, but actually, generally, whenever I was in school, my teacher used to get me to get a separate notebook, and I would write down all the key notes. So then I could go back and look and study in my notebook, and they, they would be the notes that sort of the teacher has written on the board, the examples I've written on the board. So they're going to be math mathematically correct. It's not as if I'm sort of doing them myself. I'm sort of copying the, those down from the teacher. Um, but that sort of notebook would be quite useful to go back and sort of look at sort of all the examples and explanations on the topics. So those notes would be quite useful if you've already made them through sort of year 10, 9, 10, you know, carry on. Um, if you're just going in fresh to year 11 without those notes, um, you might want to sort of to um, just sort of make sure you've got your exercise books from last year already sort of, you know, kept to the side in your bedroom so you know you've, you know, where your notes from year 10 are because obviously the GCSE isn't just a one-year course um, but you know make sure you've got somewhere where you can sort of write notes down and um, even if it's not within class if you're doing past papers if you're revising from the videos of core maths etc you might want to just sort of have a notebook um, you know I would often go to sort of as or Tesco's and grab one of those sort of pucker pads or whatever they're called or um, not pucker pie or something else um, but you know uh, you know you can get sort of notebooks you know from you know quite pretty ones or I always always go for the spotty ones whatever but you get notebooks where you can sort of write down all your notes and explanations and stuff like like that which would be helpful for you okay mathematically get ready what I mean by that is um, obviously if you're going in to study for GCSE foundation or higher there's certain things that you will need to know um, you know such as your square numbers your cube numbers the amount of students that would say to me oh, I'm not sure my times tables now is the time to get ready you know maybe start brushing up on some of the things which you know that you're you know you're not that you know you've struggled with throughout the last year because obviously the teacher will need to go through and teach you new material through year 11 so it's quite useful to sort of try and brush up on those things which you may have found difficult whether it's the times tables you know square numbers cube numbers factors whether it was Pythagoras and um, whatever those topics are uh, feel free to sort of ask in the comments below um, sort of oh, you know Ms. Corbett, have you got a video on such and such or have you got any questions on such and such and I can put in the links to those and they will you know help you sort of prepare mathematically for you know the year ahead okay and finally is the five a day um, one of the things that on the website that I've got is called the five a day. There's five GCSE questions for every single day of the year at five different levels of difficulty. Obviously, you're going into year 11. If you're aiming for a grade 8 or 9, I'd be recommend, or 7, 8, 9, I'd be recommending that you'd be doing the higher 5 a day at this point, and then maybe moving on to the higher plus 5 a day, the really hard questions, sort of maybe in the new year, January, February, and so on, to get ready for those exams. Um, if you are aiming for a grade B, which is a, a, a 6, um, yeah, what I'd be recommending is you're doing the foundation plus, and then moving on to the higher, um, you know, as you move through. And that might even be if you're for that low seven as well. So six or seven, you might want to be doing sort of foundation and then moving on to or foundation plus and moving on to higher as soon as you can. If you're aiming for a grade uh, five or four or five, so there was grade C's, um, I would be sort of recommending that you would be working on foundation at this point. You know, three, you, know you can work on them right now um, and then moving on to foundation plus as soon as you can. Um, you know, obviously you need to maybe cover some of the material this year, so maybe in the new year moving on to foundation plus. Um, if you're aiming for a grade one, two, three, I'd be recommending maybe working on the numeracy five a day now and then moving on to foundation as soon as you can. So what I'd be saying is in terms of five a day, if you can spend five, ten minutes every single day from now until the exams, I think that'd be much more effective than sort of trying to cram just before the exams. Also that idea that if you're doing five maths questions every day, it's going to keep sort of coming back to topics that you've learned maybe in fourth year, year 10, year nine, you know, the, what topics that you've learned so far, you know, 
know, in year 11 as you're sort of, you know, moving through the year. And you're going to keep coming back to them and that's going to keep that sort of information fresh in your mind. Um, so rather than sort of just doing a topic in class and then forgetting about it, the idea with the five days, you're frequently coming back to the topics that you've done before. Also, it's quite useful that if you haven't sort of, if, you, if there's a topic you haven't seen yet, you can say to your teacher, oh, what about this one? And then they might even give you a bit of a brief intro to it just before you're going to cover it. Or, you know, the teacher might say, oh, we're going to cover that next month or whatever. And then you'll know that, you know, you're going to cover that. But the idea with the five days is just you're going to sort of frequently come back to topics and sort of it's just, I think it's a really great way to prepare. So it's just that sort of getting ready for summer 2019. It's not a sprint. It's, a, it's, a, it's sort of a marathon. You've got about 40 weeks until you're finished. Um, you know, but what I would be saying is, you know, gradually start building it up now during the five day, get your notes ready, start preparing with, you know, some of those topics which you find difficult. And then if you can do those small things now, you know, as you move through the year, you can sort of up it a bit, past papers, different things that I mentioned in these videos, and then you'll hopefully, you know, ace the exam. So all I want to say is, you know, I've, I'm a firm believer that if people work hard, they can really do well. And if you start working sort of, you know, towards your exams now, just doing those little bits and sort of up in it, you'll, you'll definitely, you know, have a great chance of getting the grades that you want to achieve. Okay, guys, I hope you found that video, uh, this video useful. Um, if you've got any questions on any topics you want me to go through over the you know, you know, next week or anything that you want to get a bit of help on, put in the comments below, and I'll be posting another topic next week. Okay, all the best. Bye.